As an American traveling Western Europe, it can be difficult to plan your trip budget and know how best to blend in as a seasoned traveler. Often, Americans visiting are seen as loud, ignorant of other cultures and languages, and clueless of how to get around. Hi guys, I'm Ashley. I'm a millennial, a wife, a mom, a music educator, and I teach millennials and Gen Zers how to live debt-free, feel in charge of their finances, and rebuild their hope in the new American dream. I personally lived in Germany with my husband and daughter for three and a half years from 2016 to 2019. While there, I studied at a German music Hochschule and traveled frequently to other Western European countries. These include France, Italy, Austria, the Czech Republic, Poland, Spain, Greece, England, and Sweden. Today, I want to give you eight tips to help you avoid uncomfortable surprises on your first European vacation and avoid those awkward moments. So without further ado, here are the things that surprise my American friends and family the most. Number one, there are no free refills, not even water. I don't remember one place I went that served free refills. It's not so much a matter of stinginess with their beverages, but more so a matter of culture. People there value quality over quantity, and soda is just not something they drink a lot of anyway. Depending on which country you're in, water may not be free. So don't rely upon that and make sure to carry around a reusable bottle if you won't get to sit down at restaurants a lot. Number two, you may have to pay to use public restrooms. This mostly goes for larger towns and big metropolitan cities across Europe. Be prepared to pay anywhere from 50 euro cents to three euro per person per visit. At least for Germany, you'll find most restrooms have a higher standard of cleanliness than the average American store or gas station. Often they have paid attendants who keep the sinks and toilets clean and replenish paper towels or toilet paper. As a side note, be super polite with your restroom habits. These attendants do not play. Now, as for other countries, the restrooms may not be at the tip-top shape I speak of, especially the free ones. Just make sure to always have a few euro coins on hand. You may see a turnstile where you'll insert the coin and walk through, a counter with an attendant, or just a small table with an honor system money plate where you see euros and you need to put your euros in. Number three, the restroom is not the restroom. In Germany, it's the WC, pronounced VC. In France, it's le toilette. Most countries, you can generally say their version of toilet, and that goes as the polite way of saying the restroom. Note that it's not as much of a thing there to use the restroom in small cafes. Many German cities Many German cafes, for instance, operate like American gas station restrooms with a special key you need to borrow from the staff at the cash register. Generally, it's just easier to plan your restroom trips elsewhere or check as you enter a cafe to see if there's a public use restroom. Number four, gasoline is super expensive. You may want to take the train instead of getting a rental car. In most of middle America and the southern United States, Driving is just a necessity of life, since things are more spread out, and we do pretty well to keep the gas prices manageable to where the average sedan tank fill-up will be between $25 and $50. However, I saw daily the difference between American and German gas prices, since my husband worked on two different military bases there. I remember seeing prices on base like $2.50 per gallon, and then driving off base to see €1.75 Euro per liter. Guys. A liter is just over a fourth of a gallon. So 1.75 euro per liter meant 6 euro 60 cents per gallon. And the euro has been more valuable than the dollar in recent years. Now, if you're an automobile enthusiast who has dreamt his entire life of gunning down the Autobahn with a BMW, you do you boo. But for the rest of us, think twice. Now, number five, learn the language. Learn some of it at least. Don't be the American that walks into a French restaurant and begins to order in English, as if everyone should just know English for your sake. Yes, it is very common for a local of the Western European countries to know a bit of English or be able to speak it quite fluently, but don't take that for granted. When you take that step of learning to pronounce and say simple sentences in their language, people are much more friendly and likely to help you. For a free resource to learn some important phrases and common words, I recommend Duolingo which is both an app on your phone and a desktop website where you can treat learning languages as a game. And Duolingo is, by the way, 
the way I uh, spent an entire year on my phone to learn German. I entered Germany with about the A2 level, which is level two out of six of learning German as a foreign language. So it worked for me. It can certainly work for you. Number six, cash is king, usually. Are you in the habit of swiping a card before the cashier even finishes telling you the price? Are days of fumbling through your wallet for exact change a bygone memory? Well, you'll get nostalgic in Europe. Again, I'll speak mainly for Germany here when I say that cash is king. When I frequented cafes and went shopping, I mostly paid in cash unless the bill was quite large. If you go to the street side food vendors for bratwurst or get crepes in Paris, plan to pay with cash. As for other countries in Europe, they aren't always as uptight when it comes to debit and credit cards. However, don't be unprepared when you stop by a novelty painting stand or hop into a cafe for a delicious espresso. 6B. Euro coins are not throwaway money. In the States, we have 50 cents, 25 cents, and from then on, you might lose it and not think twice. However, money denominations of 1 and 2 euro both come in coins. And when you figure that 1 euro is currently worth $1.19, you may sober up a bit. Although it weighs down your wallet or purse a bit more, these coins are gold or silver or whatever. They are very important to have on you at all times. Remember for the restrooms. And now for number seven, you may not need to tip as much. Most tips range from one euro or five to 10% of the bill. An unsatisfactory service may not warrant a tip. When in larger cities, be careful to check your bill and make sure that service charge isn't already added. If it is, you may just tip a couple euros instead of 10%. Again, be ready with euro coins and small bills to tip and aim to give the tip to your server directly. In German speaking countries, Austria and Switzerland included, as well as the Czech Republic, it's customary to simply hand the server your bills and say the total of your bill and your intended tip for them in one amount. For example, if your bill is 12 euro, you can hand your server a 20 euro bill and say 14 please in that language. So they know they should pocket two euro as their tip and return a five euro bill to you. For nice restaurants, the tip may be 10 to 15%. For an up-to-date guide to tipping in Europe, visit this great article with the link below. It's afar.com magazine, the ultimate guide to tipping in Europe. And about tipping culture, most servers are paid a livable wage or at the very least minimum wage. So whenever you're tipping, you are not providing part of their daily expected income. You are simply giving them an extra tip. Number eight, eat at bakeries and cafes to save money on food. Lots of diehard, low-budget travelers are savvy enough to buy non-perishable groceries for small breakfast or an on-the-go lunch. However, as a food enthusiast myself, I just don't feel like I'm getting the full experience without sampling fresh food for every meal. In the States, especially if you don't live in a big city, every meal out is either at a place with a drive through or at a sit-down restaurant. The best thing about eating in Western Europe are the corner bakeries and small hole-in-the-wall cafes. Bakeries aren't just pastries, croissants, and loaves of bread. Usually, they'll have pre-made sandwiches and other yummy options for under five euro. When I travel there, I like to enjoy a full cafe breakfast with, you know, small European portions, complete with cappuccino for around 10 to 15 euro, then stop at a corner bakery during lunchtime for a quick bell pepper cheese cucumber sandwich on a fresh variety of seeded or white crusted bread. So these are my eight basic tips for what to expect when you're traveling Western Europe. But I really wanted to give you a head start to not be the stupid Americans to represent us well and have a great time blending in and experiencing the pleasure of European life. Have a great trip.